it was very open, kind of like Fremont Country Club, where everybody's just kind of mingling and stuff. You, at any moment, a mosh pit breaks out. But what was funny was they would turn the lights on after every set, no warning. And the first time, it was everybody turned Shock. into New Yorkers. Hey, yo! <laughs> This video is brought to you by Backblaze. We'll hear more about them later. But for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including my guest. Now, my guest is someone that I met at Pioneer Saloon in Good Springs, Nevada. I did a review of that venue as a, as a live music venue. It's pretty cool and interesting and a nice piece of uh, Nevada history. It's the oldest uh, working bar, I believe, in Nevada. But uh, you can check that out when you're done here. He's a singer-songwriter who's also a singer for multiple cover bands, including Fully Completely Hip and yeah. Bastards of the Universe. Love that name. Me too. Uh, from Trenchtown to Sin City, yeah. please welcome to the channel, Sean Harley. Say hi. Hey, everybody. Cheers. Oh. Got a hey, clink. What the hell? I, mean, I was getting a little eager. Bring I wanted my beer. Oh. I have no manners, Josh. It's not my fault. It's all good. <laughs> not now. Love that rum sex rum. Mm. Mm. And so, welcome, welcome, sir. This is not rum. It is whiskey. This is Frey Ranch whiskey, which is all grown from the ground up in Fallon, Nevada. It is my favorite bourbon, and I highly recommend you go get it. It's F R E Y whiskey, and um, or ranch, rather. Officially welcome. Here's to you, and here's to me. And if ever we should disagree, then to hell with you, and here's to me. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, it's a little more nuanced. A little, there's some stuff going on. I feel bad yeah. for doing a shot of it. <laughs> mm. Mm, but that is warm, warm, warming. Yes, <clears throat> it is technically still winter here. I've been fighting a, a throat thing going on. You know, as a singer. You're welcome. Yes. Yes. And By this the way, will definitely help. And I, you know, I've already done some throat code and you know the, the regular stuff. But what, what you do in your personal time? <laughs> Oh, I know it's so first time I had to do it was in Burlington, Vermont, a couple of years ago when I was like, I ain't doing throw coat for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> what I uh when I was really hitting the karaoke circuits heavy, this is like <clears throat> dreaming of being in band one day kind of thing. Um, I discovered that if you're have if you got the throat, you know, like <clears throat> kind yeah. of going on, suck on a slice of lime before you're gonna sing. Interesting. And then just room temperature water and uh and it's something about the the acid or something just it, it cut through it for huh. me yeah interesting <clears throat> and then i go sing my celine dion my celine dion hey i gotta represent you know? i love that shirt man i gotta it, represent i love it uh speaking of shirts you see mine i mean my i make music what is your superpowers if you like this or you want to check out any of my other merch go to room six dot shop if you want to support the channel in any way, definitely consider clicking the link down in the description for my Room 6 social media. That's where you'll find all ways to find me and also ways to support, like buying one of my CDs or going to Patreon for, and becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. I got some patron-only content up there. Also, that's where you'll find the email address for Room 6 if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both. We'll have a good time. Mm. Mm. Now then, on to my guest. And quick question. Yes, sir. From Cornwall to New York to Vegas? That was my He's trajectory. Canadian. I am Canadian. And because of that, <laughs> uh, because of that, before you get into that whole Exodus story, I'm sure you were moved for part of that. You, you, <laughs> you didn't decide. Yeah. I, I, hold out your hands and close your eyes, and you will get a big surprise. <laughs> it's going to be a snowball, I bet you. No. Although that would have been hilarious. That would have been great. This is something I got for Christmas. Oh, look at that. It is Swear Jar Maple Donut Whiskey. And if you're in, if you if you want to at least take a snoot of it, oh, let's smell this. it's a big cork. You know, I have a family member that used to bring home whiskey every Christmas. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? That's a big cork. Oh, my God. There's no, no denying what it is. Oh, yeah. Someone took some whiskey and threw in some syrup. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so if you want some, it is sugar in a jar. That's why I didn't offer it to you earlier. I was like, yeah, this will be funny. 
Yeah, I'll but, have a little bit of that. Oh, okay. I'll, t I'll twist your arm. Yeah, twist my arm. Um, you want to sip it out of this? Yeah, I'll just sip it out of that same one. We'll, we'll, we'll follow some whiskey with whiskey. I got this. Maple whiskey. Maple donut whiskey. That's so good. Tastes so good, we dare you not to swear. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Interview's going great. There we go. Just a little. Just a little. Just a little sample. Just a little nip. It is... Ooh. It is not, I would not recommend it with a donut, but I would recommend it with, say, I don't know, hmm. some toast or something. I don't know. <laughs> something basic to go with. It. Cinnamon toast, man. Cheers. Give me a Canadian toast. Oh, my God. Uh, here's to not jumping in the lake and freezing your balls up. Cheers. I got a pool for that. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, that's actually not really bad. It's not, actually, as a shot. I, I've been drinking it cold, like, on the rocks. It's Yeah, it's pretty smooth. <clears throat> smooth. Smooth. <sighs> okay, Red Skelton. Yeah. I just, I just dated both of those. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Shh. Have you hit the, the half a century yet, like I have? I'm getting close. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm, I'm still the old, yeah. older statesman. All right. Yeah, yeah. So then, you went from Cornwall, Canada. Yep. To, to Ontario, sorry, to uh, New York, upstate New York. Yeah. Yes, a couple different places there. Yep. To Vegas. Why? <laughs> well, <clears throat> so the Canada to New York is kind of the same sort of. Yeah, because player. you know what? It was literally like. Um, so I'm a creative guy, but I'm also kind of quirky in that I was a programmer for years and years and years. Uh -huh. I was very much into the very. I love the technical side of music in right. addition to music. So I thought, well, with that, I can, you know, do other things technically if I have a background in it. Right. So I thought, okay, that's not a bad route. So for years I worked in music or in uh, programming. So um, my last job I had in Canada was working for a company called McEwen Petroleum, which is a, which is a gas oh, company. Oh, so you were grown when you moved to, to New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I was very much a go-getter where I would try and do things and feel important. You know, everybody wants to work at a job where you, you feel respected and you're doing things. Right. Kind of, you know, there was no such thing. And, and I was quickly realizing that anytime I tried to do anything in my hometown, just how conservative things were, it was, it was such a hassle to get anything done. Like it was like, I tried, the very last thing I tried to do in my hometown was I tried to throw a concert free and we were like this was this tragically hit thing that you had mentioned earlier uh -huh. so um and it's a huge draw lots of money they could have made and the big problem was was that nobody the city didn't want to give us permits to do something for free and i'm like oh my god so that was my uh, so at that moment i'm like you know my son looked at me my oldest boy who's actually probably the age of your probably oldest boy uh i don't have a boy oh i'm sorry uh, 15, 15 year old teenage female presenting they them <laughs> at that time my son said to me he goes you're trying to do big city things in a small town is what he said to me yeah you, and i went you know what you're making a lot of sense to me right now and he goes why are you here and i'm like that again makes more sense uh, so i got a job offer from another tech company in upstate new york nice um which eventually morphed into me being their um outward facing person as far as like publicity and training and so basically what they did i worked there for about a year and a half i'm, I'm not a great programmer but i can get through right you know right. It, it my heart wasn't into it you know so basically my job evolved into doing front of house for our morning meetings uh -huh. for the for the hundred or so people that were there to at the end i had a full studio in the basement i was doing like pr premiere and like photoshop i was doing all the front nice. front facing stuff of the company so I was their face. The problem happened when the owner of the company sold it for $100 million. Uh, I mean, good for him, <laughs> good for him right? Yeah. Um, but the rest of us were like, oh, shit. So the people that bought it, um, let's just say that we're very, very conservative, you know, my tattoos. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. So when they came in, they put sort of their gunslinger VP guy in charge who was a Baptist minister from South Carolina. Oh. Right, exactly. You see where this is going. God, right? it gets worse. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and I mean, literally, we had the best job going you could get in upstate New York. Like, oh. we had jam sessions in my office all day, you know, like, depending on what was going on, 
but the, but we got shit done. And right. the reason that the company sold was because of the shit that I did, which is <laughs> the irony of the whole you thing. You worked yourself out of a job. I pretty much did. So they sent yep. this guy in. And then um, uh, as soon as this new transition was going through, I'm like, fuck, I need a vacation. So I went, I said, I'm going to Vegas. So I went to Vegas, you know, doing what people do in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And it was supremely evident that there was a mass exodus here during COVID. Supremely evident. Oh, you came then? Yeah, 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 yeah. This was all happening during COVID. So this is all like... 19. Yeah. Yeah. So I get to Vegas and, I, and you realize just how... Where is everybody? Not not just like tourists. But I I'm hope talking you enjoyed it while it lasted. Yeah, well, it was pretty nice. I was down on Fremont and I, honestly, there might have been... 15 people down there, which was really nice. Yeah, it's not like that again, or it's back to the way it was, oh, which yeah. is anytime I need to remember why I don't go down to Fremont, I go down to Fremont, I'm like, oh yeah, Fremont's yeah. experience. I was there on Thursday night this past week. Mm -hmm. um, myself and my good friend, Billy Kesner, who you know. I know BK. Drummer. Um, we're doing a little show at Hennessy's, nothing major. Him and I, we do it just Bean to kinda, flickers. Yep, the bean flickers. So we just kind of do our thing. A, a, an entire troop from South Korea just invaded um, Hennessy's cameras, the whole nine yards. It was a live stream Discovery Channel TV wow. show about dancers that have moved from South Korea to Las Vegas. No idea because, I mean, obviously there was a, a language barrier there for the most part. Oh, so it was all in Korean. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was like, like they were live streaming us and these girls were twerking and doing their thing and we're just, Billy and I are just like, What's going on? <laughs> Let's just keep on playing. Yeah. So I have a story like that. Yeah. yeah. So, and then to wrap it up, and then the guy, one of the ex workers at Hennessy's, was being, you know, cuffed out front by the cops because he was tripping balls, you know. So <laughs> these are the kind of things. And then, oh, you know, Fremont never it, changed. You know, no, no. And then here's the part that I love. So I parked down below and sort of where you go up the stairs, and I'm walking up the stairs. And as I'm walking up, I see a nice big piece of shit, and I go, yep. Back on Fremont. And I'm like, this is so, you know, yep. you got to love Fremont. Oh, yeah. I remember parking at uh, the parking structure for Golden Nugget. Many a, many a peace stain stare. Yeah, yes. many a nuggets at the Golden many Nuggets. nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. yes, I moved because there was a, a huge exodus that I'd seen for musicians. So, um, another thing that kind of went hand in hand, I lost a friend to the whole, you know, um, all of us, you know, we all have bad habits and we all, Oh, okay. You know, one of my friends, a very close friend of mine, I lost to, uh, to, to those kind of conditions. And it really made me think about things in a different light. Mm -hmm. So this is in New York or Vegas. It actually from my hometown of Cornwall, believe it or oh, not. Oh, wow. And actually I, another friend that the, around the same time I lost who was from upstate. So it was just this whole period. COVID was really rough on people, you know, as you know, mm -hmm. um, and it was all within like a two year period. It was just crazy. Everything just kind of went bam, bam, bam. So I just said, you know what? If I'm going to make this happen, now's the time. Right. So, and you know, dummy me, I, I could have got a package too. Thanks, Frazier. Nothing, nothing, nothing. A kick in the ass and a fucking <laughs> see you later. Anyways. Uh, but now you're an, uh, you're an AV production manager now, right? I am an AV production manager at uh, Four Wall, which is like Wall, yes. incredibly, I, I, I'm so fortunate to to have, you know, um, landed on my feet here oh, yeah. and people realizing that the assets that I had that people were like, are you going to grow up or are you, you know, that all the stuff that people would mm -hmm. shun you for where you were. I have a unique mm -hmm. skill set that not oh, everybody no, yeah. has. No, right? if you're in Vegas and you are doing a show and you see this guy as part of front of house or whatever you're yeah. like yes it's i'm in good, good hands yes there you it's go gonna this, be fine yes this is yes. exactly what it should be exactly yeah and, and that's the thing though but that was not a thing where i came from right? right right they just looked at it as a novelty oh you can take 12 or 15 bands and put them on a stage and one day everybody could do that i'm thinking yeah good fucking luck like that <laughs> good luck yeah. just getting them to show up yeah <laughs> i am um, using I, all the same gear <laughs> yeah i was at uh eagle area hall last night yeah which if if you know eagle area hall it is a tr it's a unique place, yes. man. It's like a basement show, but with a bar. Right. And um, I was there for the first time. I'd never been there, so uh, keep an eye out. I'll be uh, go ahead and subscribe, wherever. I will be uh, doing a review of the venue and also a review of the show. Uh, Travelers, who are a local band, was on my show yesterday at time of recording, 
And they're like, well, we're playing there tonight. I was like, I'm going there tonight. There you go. There you go. And it was a trip because you, I don't know if you've been there. You played there? I have not okay, played have, there yet. Have you been there? I have not yet. Okay. It's a trip because it's a fraternal order of eagles, which is basically, it's like a veteran's okay. post, but it's not related to veterans at all. Okay. It's all community-based. I, I actually talked to the president. Of right. What the, you walk in and you get there and you're like, okay, it's this much for the ticket. Whatever. It's cash bar, but they have an ATM inside a separate bar that's for the members of the wow, hall. Wow, okay. So, yeah, it's like you can come in and use the ATM. That's it. Over here is where you go for the music. And ATM was only two fifty for fee. I was like, wow. Reasonable? Sure. Okay. okay. Drinks were five bucks. I'm yes. drinking Maker's Mark and Jameson Black, five that's bucks. That's the nice, that's the nice yeah. part about that. Mm. Shout out to Nick, the bartender, who uh, let me taste things and, and gave me a a spot to like camp with my camera and everything and uh it was so cool because it it was very open kind of like fremont country club where everybody's just kind of mingling and stuff you, at any moment a mosh pit breaks out but what's funny was they would turn the lights on after every set no warning and the first time it was everybody turned into Shock. new yorkers ah, ah, yo! ah. <laughs> it was oh god i was like we all just turned into new yorkers that was amazing i, I know new yorkers i know new yorkers yeah well <laughs> One one downside of that place, there's no stage lights. You've got to bring all your sound, yes, so nice. everything. Yeah. But that's what I was leading to was that place. Uh, I, I have a new podcast that started in 2023 where I'm talking every week. It's called Room 6 Radio. Um, links are down in the description. It, you can, uh, on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I put out, hey, here's a list of local shows and that, that I cultivate through the week. And some people send me stuff. Other people, I just, you know, people post and I find it and I add it to my list. Monday through Sunday. And Eagle Area Hall puts on shows with like eight bands, nine bands. And I'm, I'm looking at the ticket price. I'm like, that's bargain. Right. It's bargain. Right. Um, but. It's a lot of work, though. Yeah. Like it's you, a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work for the, the promoter. The mm -hmm. la last night was a Black Sheep booking shoot. Uh, Shelly, I think. I apologize. I got your name written down somewhere. <laughs> But uh, she was there and she's like, yeah, I had my, my sound guy set up like it was literally two PA speakers and a proper mixing board. Yeah. But it was. Yeah. But I, I was sitting there like. Where are these kind of shows at the bigger ven venues with, you know, why aren't they putting on, say, I mean, every band still got half hour. Do you want to know my take on that? Yes, I should. <clears throat> I should point out on a Saturday night. That and one other place, I was going to go to Cemetery Pulp, this new place. Both shows started at 6 p.m. on a Saturday night. Which is... And both had like four or five acts. I'm like, why, why, why? But even so... What time were they done? 10.30, well... 11? 10.30. Because the show started at 6. Right. That's a long night. That's a long night. You must... It's the same as going... It's, it's starting at 8 and being done at midnight. Yeah. People want... Yeah. Most people are going to show up at 8 to 11. That's... that's and the yeah, there was, an, there was definitely an influx... And um, they were there for a particular band, or they were just right. It, but it, but the thing about Eagle Area Hall is it's all ages. Gotcha. If you if you drink at the bar, you got to pr prove it, and you get one of these green bands as opposed to different color. And but I I, I want to see the shows. I want to see shows like that where it's like almost a festival mm, in a night kind of I thing, like eight nine bands. Even if they're only getting you know a half hour is really what four songs, right? If That's what I. 20 minute sets, yep. uh, which equals four songs, but you got a back line, you get a 10 minute changeover. There was no back. Yeah, this was the traditional get your crap off the stage, get it, get it on. Yeah. And it was like, hey, they helped us come. I literally heard this. Hey, guys, you know, the rest of my band, they helped us get our stuff off stage. Help them. Let's help them. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. there was a drummer who was shared. This was a, a basically. You do find friends, though, in that yeah. situation. Which this is was really also, nice. this was a tour. This was the last stop on a tour. Right. And then there were some local support, such as Travelers. And I thought it was really evident they were used to this. Set up, breakdown, set up, breakdown, which I don't miss that part at all. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I was working before I started at four while I was doing, I was doing shows from a house for um, the usual place. Mm. And I mean, I worked the orgy show. I didn't um, do front of house, but I was like following. I was the back, back up to the right. front of house, right? Making you sure you were the bar back, basically. That's <laughs> right. So it was just the the on and off, and the on and off, and the technical bullshit. And I'm thinking, right. oh my god, no. It was it was, and you know, true to form, it didn't sound 
you know, great, but it was okay. But it was a tough sell. Like when you've got like seven bands or six mm -hmm. bands on in one night and, and, and I get like no drummer is ever like, yes, they can all use my kit. Yes. Nobody wants that. No, you can, you know, I, I, part I I'm with you. It's like one of the things I, I like, and also as a musician disliked about vamped. Yes. Is that they have the, the back, the back line for at least the bass player and stuff. You can put your head up and right. plug in. But at the same time, it's not your gear. It's not my sound. It's That's blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, there's something to be said about, okay, there's a house kit. You bring your, your snare and your breakables and uh, which is symbols, you know, and, and whatever else you need. But that's minimal problems, but it's still every single one has to be remiked and reset up. It yeah. does. And, it, and then, you know, with, with technology, the way it is nowadays, it, it, you can sure you can have them sound check. So you can have the headline or sound check and then they take all their shit off and then you mm -hmm. go backwards and now everybody's going to start playing when you get to the headliner again. Yeah. It's great to say, yeah, let's just recall that shit, but it's not the same. Yeah. You, you sound check them in a room that had nobody in it. Exactly. Or, or there's just going to say that. so many different factors that make up yep. and then you're like, Oh my God. And you know, it takes you a few minutes to get these things going. Speaking of, Oh my God, I was at triple B. I was at backstage bar yep. and billiards and it was um, it was emo night. It, it they were uh, it was a in response to when we were young, which yep. got blown out in the wind. It was when we were emo, and uh, the headliners were Twin Rova, who were cool enough to come be on my channel while they were in town. Right, that was awesome. Uh, and some other band, uh, some other people who have been on the show, such as AJ Facillo from Wyatt in the Ashes, and uh, Scotty, not Scotty, no, um, somebody else who was been on the channel. I forgot. I did a review of it here, and. The person running sound was the guy who normally is running around running the place. <laughs> and he was just, I'm doing my best. So we were sitting in the green room because I was there to like film and everything. And, and I knew the headliners. So we were um, sitting in the green room for a good hour, just drinking whiskey and just chilling. I was like, this is the best show ever. <laughs> I don't care how good the music is. This is awesome. I heard the, I heard the, uh, the uh, green room was pretty nice there. Ze zebra print walls. Yeah. Like furry. It's, it was kind of like that get him to the Greek, stroke the walls kind of thing. Um, and they have a pool table in there. It's the only pool table in the place now. Well, they have, if you, you can actually rent it out, apparently they have a, a little bar you can stock and, nice. and a little, um, turntable and stuff. So yeah. And there's, this, it's got its own bathroom, which is nice. And have you, you've never been in the green room there? I have not. I've been to the, I've been to the bar. I've seen have a few you, friends. Have you seen and... the secret door? I have. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. From the other side of it, it's. No one uses the secret door like they should. It should always be this big thing, you know, with like smoke and fog or whatever. But it's just there's drum sets, just drum sets. <laughs> Moving on, we're getting back to Spinal Tap. There should be lots of like smoke, and they should just come right out of that. Yes. <laughs> um, and actually, before we move on, we're actually going to hear a message from Future Josh while uh, we take a quick booze break. So, booze break. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Making YouTube videos can be a little resource intensive. It seems like hardly a week goes by that I don't have my computer yelling at me about running out of space. Fortunately, I've got Backblaze. Whether you need to free up space on your hard drive or want to be able to retrieve something while on the go, Backblaze offers peace of mind for just $7 a month. They offer unlimited computer backups, which you can have access to anywhere with an internet connection. That's safe and encrypted. You can even restore old versions of files from up to 30 days ago. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get a 15-day free trial. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Backblaze for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back! So... When, uh, I haven't gotten around to my usual interview questions. We've been going down rabbit holes. But rabbit holes. I like rabbit holes. Let's talk earliest musical influence. Ace Frehley. Wow. I was going to say, you know, I was going to like go more into it, but yeah, okay. Ace Frehley. And that is a very cool style. Yeah, I wanted to do something a little different than it's everybody not our, else. What is that style? It's not I our have deco. no idea. Yeah, you kind of have the same, because I was looking at... And then I got Josh Home right there. I, I was looking at this one, and I was trying to figure out, what is that style? Because is that Crossbones? 
And that is a luchador. That's all it is. Okay. I just thought it was so fucking cool. It is. It's like, I'm like... Because it reminds me of Crossbones from The Punisher. That's... Well, I'm a big fan of all of Marvel. I'm more of a DC guy myself. Mm -hmm. than, than Batman Forever. Kind of like a, a nice little... And then, my, of course, this one was the one that sucked. Oh. Okay. Right in the armpit. Oh, oh I thought you meant... Because I was like, that's really... No, nice. no, no. I have a tattoo artist from back home. And nice. I missed him. And he did both this whole arm. And he was just... Yeah. Oh. Nice. It's like... It's like but, crack, right? You well, get going. Oh, believe me, I I have one. Yeah, and that's it. But yes, sorry, I yes. Just, that's what my I designed was, this one myself. Hmm. Yep. Uh, and and it means something to me, and I'll, I can get into that. But uh, then I met my wife. Right. I don't want a tattoo boy, is what she said. That's. And 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 ever since then, I've wanted one. I've wanted another one so bad. I wanted one on this arm to balance right. it out. Sorry, microphone. Um. And it's like, well, okay, when we have, when we're done having kids, we have one. And when we're done having kids, I'm gonna get someone on that arm. The problem is that you think, oh, they're in, they're, they're in dance class. I'll get some ballet slippers. I don't want to do dance class. Oh, they're taking music lessons. I'll get, yeah, no. So every time I think I have an idea, no. And now I'm 50, and I'm my wife's. It's, no, we've been married 20 right. years. Me, me wanting a tattoo does not, oh, you know, overturn. Domestic bliss for twenty years. Oh, I get it. happy life, yes. happy wife. No and and you're, you're in a relationship yourself. Here's yeah. here's my advice to anyone who wants to be married over twenty years. You can be right, or you can be happy. You can't be both. No, no. And that goes both ways, but generally, it's yeah. My thing is, I tend to say um, men are immature and women are crazy. It's just the level of each that we, mm. you know. It, they, it varies, you know. Yeah. You could have a very low I, I level feel of like crazy. Girls become lot. women. Girls become women earlier than boys become men. And a lot of boys, <clears> and you know this is true. A lot of boys never become men. Right. They're boys stuck in men's bodies. Right. And they just, whatever reason, think that that everything that was important to them as a as a younger person. Oh my god, is important. God, if I could talk to my younger oh, self. Yeah. Well, I could tell it. Just relate, even just relationship Chill wise. The fuck out is yeah. what I would say. <laughs> the fuck out of here! What's wrong with you? Chill the fuck out. Yeah. it's all gonna work out. Man. Oh, I it's think I, I think out. back to moments where I did what in my head was playing out as this is like from the, oh the this is that moment this in the movie. Is the perfect time. I'm gonna. I'm. They, they tell me they're seeing someone. I'm gonna grab them and kiss them, and it's gonna just no. What never what, works what, out. What has imagine happened? you're you seeing that. You get slapped. Oh, I didn't get. Slapped. But imagine you're seeing that. What you see is someone being assaulted. And yes. I, you're not watching this. I know you're not watching this, but I am so sorry, Ava. Yeah. I am so very sorry. It, 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 it haunts me to this day. He, he thought it was like he had the... I thought it was... He had the, the, the I, ghetto blaster, and you were just doing the whole thing. I, and... Yeah. I didn't know I'd been there. Yeah. But moving on. Yeah. Wow. I digress. Rabbit holes. I'll get you there every day. Oh, no. Ace Freely. Please. Ace Freely. Then so, I went to Steve Stevens. No, no, no. Hold on. Back up. Well, the, the rest of the question is, Yep. what was that first thing that made you go, I want to do that? Was it Ace Freely? Because he had a guitar and he looked like a fucking right. superhero. Now, for me, it was Kiss in general. I want to say Kiss Live, but I don't know because I was like five or four. And my brother, me too. my older brother is nine years older than me, put on a Kiss album. I, and all I remember is jumping up and down on the couch and hearing it. But that's it. I will be honest. They're not my favorite band anymore. Yeah. No, I'm with you there. And it's partly because of who they are. He is. You know. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. No, I get it. Where, um, I went and saw Kiss when they first put the makeup back on and mm. whatever it was. Because there was, was that period. So there was excited. a period. There was a period in the 90s yeah, where yeah, yeah, they yeah. took it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, uh oh. <laughs> And then they got Peter Chris and Ace Freely back for like a heartbeat and mm -hmm. they all put the makeup on. And I went to the show, oh, the and yeah. I was like, yeah. And I was like, fuck, they're terrible. They are so bad. I'm like, oh, my God. Younger me was, a, yes. oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> but, I mean, the same could be said if you listen to your own music. <laughs> no. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, God. No, I, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I really enjoyed it and kiss her. I mean, it's it was one of those things that I, I am so glad that I went. But I think I would have rather, rather see early kiss versus mm -hmm. mid-90s kiss. What I what I always enjoy is when you're at a show, you're hearing a lot of the same stuff, right? And suddenly you hear a whole other level of just oh, oh, you wow, okay. I need to know who you are. I've come across that quite a bit in the um, in the metal uh, sphere, let's just say. Yes. Um, 
as I was saying, I have three children and my oldest and I, um, we used to make it a priority to go to at least one festival a year. Nice. So we would discover things like uh, one of the bands him and I really dig is Beartooth. I'm not really crazy about the new stuff, but um, they're fun I, to work out too. Yeah. I, I found that they, they had that sort of heaviness with sort of pop sensibilities, which kind, kind of did. Yeah. And I was sort of, I sort of feel the same way about bring me the horizon. I think they're sort of the future metal, but I, but I just, him as a front man kind of really bothers me. So, and it was like seeing the other one that him and I was like, um, I can't remember what were they called. They were really heavy and they all wear chinos and boat shoes. And I'm like, this is not metal. They can't wear dress shirts if you're going to play metal. Sorry. I, I'm, reminded, I'm, I'm reminded of the time that Rob Halford came out at some award show or whatever. I'm reminded where Robert Halford came out and said that some 41 were the future of metal. No. And, and yeah, and rightfully so. There were people who were, yes, and it was just like, huh? Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, the only what, why I say I think it's the future of metal is because if you listen to what they're doing, they're doing short. They're not so much doing albums; they're doing mm -hmm. short releases. Mm -hmm. They're they're they've got that pop sensibility, but yet they can still have those heavy, uh, heavy. To heavy me, they're parts. the future of pop punk, or they were. Now, I mean, there are bands. I just I had a band on here where uh, it, they were all fifteen or younger. Yep, they were all related. Yep, and they were called the Dollheads, and they. Are doing amazing stuff in the pop punk world. They've they've they're gonna they're playing they play Life Is Beautiful. They're gonna be playing pop, punk rock bowling. Right. They won the Henderson Battle of the Bands. They beat out uh, Shadow of the Moon, who was also on the on the show, and they are amazing in their own right. And it was just like the future is okay. It's we're gonna be yes, okay. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Don't forget though. Sometimes going fast is great, but you need to milk the riff in order to get everything. Oh, that's the involved. thing I liked about the Dollheads music. Uh, they have a song called "I Wish I Were a Demon." <laughs> like, right. I wish I were a demon because I'm tired of being a human. But it was just it, and and they're doing they're hitting all the, the the beats you expect from pop punk. They're not trying to rewrite the, the genre. Exactly. Uh, they they're big Green Day fans, but they're also bringing in a lot of the um, what's the word? Older influences. Right. Yeah. Right. But but I really enjoy. Uh, I got my my family has a history with Green Day, but anyway, we won't go into that. But uh, I. I really enjoy seeing young bands who you know have not even close to peaked. Who, like, you're hearing it and you're like, "Here's one I'll throw at you." Now. So, again, my son Cleopatra is a band name. I thought you're, you said your son's name was Cleopatra. No, 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 I was no, like, no, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, no. buddy! You need an intervention." No, 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 no. <laughs> my oldest boy uh, went to Queens University in Kingston, and for a very short period of time, he had a little cover band or, or original. I don't know what they did, but they opened up for a band, and he calls me up. He goes, "Dad." You gotta check out these guys, Cleopatra. Blah blah blah. He goes on on his big spew, right? I mean, that's cool that he he does that though. That's, right, that you have that relationship. He, yeah, and it, it was fantastic because he's like literally just off getting off stage, and he's like calling me. Mm -hmm. So fast forward two years, we go to a big festival in uh, um, North Carolina, one of these metal punk things, and sure enough, on the third stage, there's Cleopatra, and my son's like, yeah, they go like. And but it's great to see it's mm. like one of these two man like Royal Blood is another one that I think is just Oh, I love two pierce two person bands. They're just so um creative, I think. And and what they're doing is songwriting. It's not it's no longer about how cool it is or how musically complicated it is. Mm -hmm. Royal Blood is about a song and a riff and making like you want to go like this. I feel like I've heard that name. Yeah. Oh, oh no, that's the kind of metal I really like. That's what hits me in the base of the spine is is the is suddenly not even a breakdown or a chug, right? But just where it's got you know, yes, where you can't help but do. We used to this. call that involuntary headbanging. Yeah, and so I. So if you I, wrote I, a song I, mm -hmm. and you could do involuntary headbanging to your own song, then you're like, yeah. shit, this is only good, you know? What yeah. I, I I last night I, re <laughs> I I I'm reminded this morning that I'm 50. Because last night I, there was some involuntary, there was some voluntary, but there was some involuntary. And then there was some involuntary aches and pains when we got home. <sighs> All right, we're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> Stick around. We're going to be seeing. Uh, we're going to be seeing something from this gentleman here. Do, you, do we know what it's going to be yet? I don't know. I've got a flurry of stuff, but I flurry uh, a flurry of stuff. Is that a hockey reference? Uh, uh, Jean Guy Fleury. Yeah, Tabernacle. I, I was actually going to ask you. Do you go to the the Golden Knights games? Um, we, my mother was in town. We had tickets the last time she was here. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately we didn't get there. My mother is a little older. Uh, and mine's 88, yeah, so. yeah. So it's like, you, 
we had every intention because she is a huge Montreal Canadiens fan. I know I don't understand it, but <laughs> yes, no hockey. Um, believe it or not, a four wall, huge hockey fans. Are like, they the ones that that have to do with the whole jumbotron thing that where you see a lot of local bands do, being shown? Um, we do Allegiant. We don't do okay. Uh, oh, you do the toilet bowl. Yeah. That's our gig. Yeah, that's right. I said that, Raider fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your stadium yeah. looks like a toilet bowl. Anyway, yeah. yeah go yeah. Niners. Anyway. Uh. Yes, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's um, good times in Vegas. Let's nice. just say that. All right. Uh, we got two more questions. All right. I got two more answers. Beautiful. Number one, you ever do a show with the Dirty Nelsons? The Dirty Nelsons, yeah, that's my son's band. I know. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting. I see what you said that. I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't say the name. I was waiting because there's another band that he's played with called the Dirty Nils from Canada, and they have this really cool song. It's a it's very much in the sub in the in the sum forty one vein, and it's about driving their old car and listening to Slayer. Nice. It's yeah. I mean, that's what it was. It was an old um, what were those fucking minivans back in the day that everybody had? Oh, driving that fucking red minivan. Oh 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 um. You'll know it. Not the Ford Transit. Uh, you know, the Explorers and shit. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, the old yeah, school yeah. ones? Anyways. Yeah. Dodge Caravan. Caravan. That's it. The Dodge yes. Caravan. That was your band vehicle. The, the Dirty Nils. That was it. Yes. So I've seen a lot. Yeah, the Dirty Nils. My son had a band in, in, in university. What was with the Dirty thing? I, you, if you went to their house, you'd understand. Fair the enough. Dirty. But who were the Nelsons? We don't know. Oh, because you know there was a band, Nelson. Yes, we do. And they were like. Not very dirty. No, they were very pretty though. Yeah, so pr- the hair was so pretty. I wish I had that hair. I don't because I used to have hair to the middle of my back, and I didn't last long because you get you start doing this and I you're like, no, yeah, this is dumb. But I wish I could have. I ha- I wish I had the option. Let's just well, put it yes. that way. I'm happy to say I still have my hair. Do they still do? <sighs> do they still? I know they still tour. Do they still Nelson? have hair? Yes. I have no idea. I didn't know. They do. I think I again. Being from small town, right. I have friends that were hair metal dudes, and they would fly to what is it M two, and see all these hair metal bands. So mm. it'd be like Rat and and fucking Kicks and Tracy Gunn and L A no, Gunn. No, Nelson, and Nelson. Was not, Nelson was not hair metal. Yeah, they were in that fucking. Oh, they were they, hair, were they were hair. So Silverheart was more hair metal. Yeah, part. but they were part of that crew. No, you don't know who any of these people are. <laughs> So, angel eyes. <laughs> oh, memories. I was. I used to sing. I used to sing into the hairbrush. All right. All right. I did too. So, actually. So, last question. Yes. And I, I do want to thank you again for coming on, and thank, thank you, you for watching. Last question. I asked this of all my prey. Okay. And let's pretend we're talking to Little Sean. Right. Really, what we're doing is we're talking to new musicians. What do you wish someone had told you before you went down this road that is music? And don't say change your strings. Believe my. Believe in myself. One hundred percent. That's, okay. that's really what it comes down to. Um, I should have been here 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. Back it's when, back those... when, like, where was I, where was this, like, I was okay to live in my car and go on tour thing when I was young. Exactly. Right. I yeah. mean, I did, I, I've seen a lot of the East coast. I've seen a lot of this area, but it's like, uh, there was a time when it was like, what, what was I thinking? Like, mm-hmm. it was just, it's the, don't be afraid. Don't feel don't get caught up in in, yep. in heart and don't get caught up in mind. Just do what follow follow your musical heart. I like that. Don't get caught like that's right. Good. Right on. Just follow your musical heart. Because you know what? You're better than you fucking think you are. <laughs> wow. Yes. One hundred percent. Some that right there. Put that on a shirt. Yes. Yep. It's one hundred percent the truth. You're better than you fucking think. I like it. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know what? just put yourself in the deep end and see where you fucking fall. And if you're willing to do that, you mm-hmm. are going to stand heads and fucking feet beyond everybody else. Just that fucking is, do it. It's such a hard lesson to learn when you're younger. Yeah, I when wish I would have that. When you're older, it's always easy to look back and say, why wasn't I less afraid? Exactly. Because you were younger. Right. If you're a new musician especially, take it. Take and, a leap. And, you know, there's there's always that financial aspect that everybody's yeah. afraid of. Get Get a job until you don't need one. Get a job because it's so much easier to buy gear with money. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, there are places in the U.S. right now where you can move that are music-friendly places. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, you're almost too late if you don't fucking do your thing now. Do it now. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Do it now. The window is fucking closing. And I'm not joking. Everything 
from COVID is starting to coalesce again, right? Right. The road is going to start fucking, the bills are going to start coming down and acts are going to start going back on the road and shit's going to start happening and they're going to need people. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a player, whether you're a tech, whether you just want to get in the industry, this is the time. Otherwise, you're fucking beat because the window's closing. Right. Word. I couldn't say it any better. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for coming on the channel. Stick around. We're going to see something from this gentleman. Possibly two things. Yeah. And in the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. And remember to be amazing. We will temporarily say goodbye. We'll see you in the outro. Bye. See ya. Sean Harley for dropping by. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. Definitely check out down in the description all the ways you can find him online. If you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. 
If you would like to subscribe to the channel, click over there. It really would make a difference. Please, please consider ringing the bell so you get notified when new stuff pops up. Uh, other than that, if you also want to check out my own live mu music right over here. And uh, yeah, remember to be amazing. Oh, hey, also, any way you support the channel, you might end up on that list over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Sean. Goodbye, Sean. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.